Here's what's coming up on today's show. Even if you've been saving your money and investing for a long time, it's easy to make rookie mistakes. Today, Mark and I are going to talk about some of the top rookie mistakes we see people make and how you can avoid them or fix them if you've already made some mistakes in your own financial life. It's easy to get lost on the way to retirement. Things like taxes, improper planning, and excessive market risk can all lead you astray from your goal of a successful and happy retirement. That's where Liz Whittaberry comes in. She's a holistic financial advisor and the founder of Best Path Advisors, and she can help guide you to a better financial path. This is Retire on Your Best Path with Liz Whittaberry. It's time for another episode of Retire on Your Best Path with Liz Woodbury and myself to talk about making some rookie mistakes, even if you are an experienced investor. And of course, that's okay, right? We're human. Everything happens. Uh, you know, People step into different mistakes from time to time, and it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It's just understanding them and trying to make sure that you're working with someone to help you uh, stay on your best path. That is the point. So we're going to get into that this time on the podcast. Liz, what's going on? How are you? I am good. I'm good. I'm glad that we're uh, moving into the spring season finally. Yeah. yeah. You and I were just talking about that except for except for the green pollen that will be everywhere. <laughs> uh that's already starting actually, but that's okay. Those pine trees, they uh they will cover you, that's for sure. But yeah, it's nice to be in the spring. The days are getting longer. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. So Okay, so you've got the pine trees where you are. Uh-huh. I've got the post oaks, and they have the long uh, squiggly pollens that look kind of like oh, a yeah. caterpillar, okay. yeah. and they fall everywhere. So yeah, we, got some we, of those we will too. have that. Yeah, we got some of those too, but definitely more pine. Uh, okay. And it makes everything, yeah, super green. So. Uh, when those pine cones, uh, they they just, I don't know, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's hard to describe <laughs> for people who don't see it, that's for sure. But uh, let's let's get into some rookie mistakes here uh, and talk about a few different things. I- investments with no purpose. I think this is an easy one to think about right now. The last number of years, right, you could use Bitcoin or you could use, you know, whatever. People kind of say, oh, this is the thing, right? I got to get sure. in on that. Um, but what are you doing with it? Like, what is its purpose for you? And it might be easy to say, well, but the purpose is to make me money. But a lot of times people will get into investments. They truly don't understand why they have it and what, they're, what it's doing for them. Right, right. And just making money is, there's more to a strategy than just making money. You right. know, when we think about the purpose in a portfolio, you should have things that are protecting your capital, things that are providing you some interest income, some dividend income, things that are providing some long-term growth so that you can beat inflation. Maybe you want some speculation and some uh, in there, and that would be where some of these things you mentioned, these fads would come in, some speculation. That should be a smaller part of the portfolio. Mm-hmm. Some hedging, some asset allocation, some diversification. But I believe that you know your core portfolio needs to be aligned with the core purpose And for retirees, that's going to be providing your retirement income over your lifetime. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, think about the dot-com crash, right? I mean, that was just basically everybody realized, ooh, (laughs) this is awesome, right? And and, And it wound up being the right thing in time, but it was too much too fast, right? Right. And if you're retired, that would be, that would not be a situation you want to be in. So what I recommend for retirees is to do a bucket plan and have certain investments that are lined up for the first five years of your retirement uh, income mm-hmm. you know, that's more secure the next five years, beyond 10 years, then a different type of investment that's going to provide some of that growth, some of that um, you know, keep up with inflation, as well as some capital protection over your lifetime. Yeah. And, and thinking about each investment and knowing which bucket does it fall in, what purpose is it serving, what is it doing for me in my retirement plan. Yeah, absolutely. So that's number one, having investments with no purpose. That can certainly be a rookie mistake that even experienced investors can make. Not understanding your risk, certainly a big one here. And this one, it doesn't really matter what level of investor you are. It's easy to not truly understand the risks that you're taking. And it's also easy to kind of fall asleep on risk. We certainly woke up to it in 2022. Many people did, right? Mm -hmm. I think people are surprised that risk can change over time. You know, you and we've seen that with the bonds in oh, yeah, this last point. period of time. 
and people expect that something is going to always do X, whatever that is. It's always going to be stable. It's always going right. to go up. It's always going to whatever that is. But that risk can change over time depending on the economy and the market cycle that we're in. And so that catches people off guard. The other thing I see is that our risk tolerance changes. When things are really rosy, people tend to have a higher risk tolerance. Well, we all like risk when it's going up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And then when it changes, then people have a lower risk tolerance. And uh, it's important to consider that. How might this risk change over time? How might my risk tolerance change over time? But then put in place a process where you're doing the analysis that you need to do yeah. to consider the risk. Do that fundamental analysis, which is how does this investment stand up on its own just by itself? And then do that technical analysis to say, where are we at in the cycle? What are the things that I should or shouldn't be doing right now? Yeah. And, and often people think that they're, by being just diversified, that they're reducing their risk. And that's not always the case either, right? So you think, well, I've got multiple mutual funds or whatever the case is, so I'm spread out. So I'm reducing the ability to maybe uh, get hurt. However, those mutual, you know, multiple mutual funds, for example, might all be large cap, and so it's basically yeah, the it same. It might be kind of five thing. five things of the same thing. Yeah, um, and that is exactly true, and that can especially happen in in an environment where you're more restricted, like a four hundred one k plan, where you have mm. less yeah true. opportunity to you know mix up your uh, asset mix. Yeah, I love the story I got sharing the story from another advisor from a number of years ago, had a client come in with 30 different mutual funds and just was <laughs> adamant that they were diversified and were blown away at how many times they had that overlap, you know, right? Uh, and couldn't figure out why, you know, when they had a big dip in a certain sector that... They were down. They it's were like, getting clobbered. Yeah, because yeah, it was all the same sector, you know. Right. Uh, not all right. of it, but a good chunk of it. Right. So it winds up being, you know, wind up being a problem there. So, again, not understanding those risks. That's number two on uh, on our countdown here. Number three, emotional decision making. Man, this one's a hard one to overcome, no matter who you are, because we're humans and we're emotional. Absolutely, and it's hard for us to see our own biases, which is where it can be very helpful to work with somebody that can point those out and that they're continuing to define more biases. If you look that up, there's, there's a list of, you know, a hundred plus, but some of the really common ones that I think we need to all be aware of would be that recency bias where whatever's going on currently is what's impacting us the most. Uh, you know, so if things are going really bad in the market this year, then we're uh, thinking that's, that's how we need to plan for the rest of uh, the next 20 years. Right. Another one is loss aversion. This can prevent people from doing the things that they need to do when they need to do it. Loss aversion is when we feel the pain of losses a lot more intensely than we feel those gains. This is true for everybody. And we want to avoid the loss. Well, sometimes people will have an investment that they shouldn't have, but they're not going to sell it until it gets back to, to that original purchase price. Instead of realizing if I take this investment and move it over here, this other thing's going to grow possibly better, perform better, have less risk. Mm -hmm. And so people can get stuck uh, in that because of the loss aversion. Another one is overconfidence. You know, I work with a lot of confident people, people that have been CEOs and CFOs and engineers and, you know, very confident in their ability to analyze. And yet sometimes we can have greater confidence in, our judgments about situations than really the objective accuracy of that and disregard information that conflicts and miss, you know, miss things that, that we should be thinking about in the portfolio. And that's again, where having that input can help in that overconfidence. And so it's important to be objective, to do the research, not lose sight of your time horizon. What's that time frame that you're investing in? Uh, but also don't take action just to take action. Yeah. You know, do that based on a plan. Yeah, and, and you know, the old saying about if you hear something repeated enough times, you start to accept it as the truth. Uh, it certainly it works in any aspect of life, not just 
you know, whatever else, but also financially. If you keep hearing, oh, this is the thing, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, you might start to actually think it, even though it might not be the right situation for you. Or the opposite. This is the worst product ever. You should stay away from it. Uh, and then people have such a, a strong bias against it when it could be the only thing that accomplishes a particular goal that they need or a particular task right. that they need. So it's not good to try. Right. It's hard. We're humans. We have biases. But it's it's certainly good to your point, like you said, to have that third party person that can be that sounding board that you can bounce ideas off of that have a bit more objectivity about it than you than we do because it's our own money so great yeah point. and and you saying that in that way just made me think this as well it's important to consider the bias of where the information is, is coming from oh, absolutely. so if you got information that you're picking up because you're doing your research on the web and you're picking up information from different websites you do still you need to be extremely objective about what's the bias of the person that has put this out here or of the you know news feed that has mm -hmm. posted these articles because that can play into the way that it's presented and there could also be some very key points that are missed or not explained on the pros and cons yeah you know what yeah, are especially the, nowadays yeah Yes. I mean, information is it's so it's so easy now to craft things on on the Internet to where it looks like a, a, a news story that's really a sales ad disguised mm -hmm. to look like one. Right. Uh, and so you may not be getting the whole truth. And that's where and that's OK, because you can even walk in and say, hey, I saw this yeah. thing and it's really interesting to me. And you're sitting down with an advisor locally and saying, is this a good idea? And that's where you start to get more of the real information when you sit down with someone and, and you're like, you know, face to face. And you can talk about those ideas and then kind of you know work through them as to whether they're going to be good or bad for your situation. So emotional decision making number three. Uh, the hot tip is number four, Liz. Rookie mistake is, and we all know this one, right? You're, you're hanging out with someone or whatever the case is. And, you know, they, they give you some hot tip on something. And usually by the time we hear a hot tip, it's really lukewarm at best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. But... I just have to laugh because I remember a story many years ago. Uh, there was a couple that had invested in something based on this hot tip. Uh, a good friend that get, told them about this, and, and they put a nice chunk of money into this investment. They lost all their money. Their good friend lost all their money. Years go by, and the friend brings them another hot tip. Oh, no. <laughs> and the friend tells them that. You know, they felt so bad about losing their money the first time that they wanted to bring something to them to make it up. So they invest again because they think, well, this person really wants to make it up to us. This is going to be a better deal. Wow. They all lose their money again. It's a funny story, but it's also a sad story yeah, because yeah, it's so, yeah. easy to to think, oh, that sounds so great. And I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out. I could make X with but the other side of that coin is you could also lose all of your money. And so you have to do your own research. You don't just act on a hot tip. You need to do some research. Yeah. If, if, if you're being pressured to make a quick decision, then it's probably not a good thing. You need to have time to do the research yep. and protect yourself from losing money. Because if it is after you do the research, it's a good investment to make, then great. Yeah. Make it. Well, think about your friends who go out to Vegas or something and they tell you how awesome of a time it was and how well they did. They don't, you know, they don't often come back and go, I lost my shirt, <laughs> right? <laughs> they only want to tell you the fun story, right? The good story. So same kind of thing. All right. Number five, uh, and we'll wrap it up with this one, Liz, forgetting about fees. Uh, certainly a rookie mistake here that anybody can make. They're there and they don't make it easy sometimes to ascertain what those fees are. A lot of people don't even know that they have fees in their 401ks because they're not transparent on the 401k statement. And so they can be surprised that there are fees in those funds. Another place that people can be surprised is how much the fees are in mutual funds. If they do have variable annuities that they had purchased, how much the fees can add up to be because there's layers of fees uh, in those investments. Whether the investment is a is a good investment for them or not they do need to know what the fees are you know it can seem like it's not that big a deal that it's a little bit more of a fee but that can add up and compound over a period of time i had done a 
an analysis for a couple. They had a portfolio of about $2 million and they were paying a total fee of 1.4%. So there was 1% fee to the advisor. And then the funds were a little bit higher, you know, fee structure mm -hmm, that, right. the, that the advisor was using. So there was another 0.4 there. And our total portfolio fee would be 0.8% for that 2 million portfolio. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at over a 25 year period of time, if both portfolios averaged 7%, what would happen? Their current portfolio, 7% with 1.4% fee would grow to 7.7 .7 million. In our portfolio, averaging 7% over 25 years with a 0.8% fee would grow to 8.9 million. Well, that's 1.2 million more wealth over that 25 year period. It doesn't seem like a big difference in the one year that you're looking at, right, but because right. of the compounding, it can become a much bigger difference. So while it's not that exciting to think about the fees and expenses, it's not as exciting as saying, well, what's your hot tip? It can pay off over time. It can pay off even much more so than trying to find that hot tip. Yeah. Avoid and the hot tip and, and save on fees, right? Exactly. Exactly. So again, you've got to do your research and check your fees, make sure that they're fair, make sure that, um, you know, you believe that you're getting good value for the fees that you're paying, but that you're minimizing the fees and not paying more in fees than you need to pay. Well, and that's the whole point of sitting down with a qualified professional like Liz, founder and financial advisor at Best Path Advisors, uh, because you want to find out how the different things are going to affect you. There's so many moving parts to retirement, right, Liz, that it just, they all work together. It's a big puzzle piece and you want to make sure you're doing the right things at the right time. And, and that's one of the reasons we do the podcast is just to share some hopefully useful nuggets of information as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, our, our purpose here is to help people know the things that they should know to plan for the very best retirement that they can live out so that they can be on their best path. Absolutely. So do us a favor. If you enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the show on Apple, Google, Spotify. You can find that on uh, just simply by typing in retire on your best path in the search box of any of those apps. But you could also just stop by Liz's website, make it all easy right there under one resource. Lots of good tools, tips and resources at bestpathadvisors.com. That's bestpathadvisors.com. You can also reach out to Liz that way as well. Thank you for your time here on the show. And we'll see you next time right here on Retire on your best path. Thank you, Mark. The preceding program is sponsored by Best Path Advisors, which is solely responsible for its content. Securities offered through J.W. Cole Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through J.W. Cole Advisors. Best Path Advisors, J.W. Cole Financial, and J.W. Cole Advisors are unaffiliated entities. The opinions expressed by Liz Whitberry should not be construed as specific tax, legal, or investment advice, nor as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Neither J.W. Cole Financial nor its representatives provide legal, tax, or accounting advice. Persons who provide such advice do so in a capacity other than as a registered representative of J.W. Cole. Investing is subject to risks, including the loss of principal. Due to volatility within the markets mentioned, opinions are subject to change without notice. Information is based on sources believed to be reliable, however their accuracy or completeness cannot be guaranteed.